much as we can look into the individual rather than create one recipe that fits for everyone as much as we can individualize the, the, the knowledge that we have. So I, I believe that that's going to be something very important for, for the future. Hello, you fantastic humans. So today we are talking to, honestly, the most inspiring Christina Rich, who is both a funded investigator at her Chrono Epilepsy Laboratory at Future Neuro, as well as a lecturer at the School of Pharmacy and Biomolecular Sciences at RCSI in Ireland. Christina will explain to us today how she is able to use what she learns from both roles to complement one another, and how her research into the impact of microRNAs and circadian rhythms, uh, which you can find links to in the Epilepsy Sparks Glossary, can disrupt the brain and lead to seizures and epilepsies. So stay tuned, and if you would like to learn more about epilepsy and epilepsy research each and every week, do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell down below for notifications. If you're already a fan of the channel, we'd really appreciate it if you could like this video. It really makes a huge difference to us and enables more people from around the world to see credible content about epilepsy and epilepsy research. Also, do note that you can now access more information about our guests, including Christina, for free via ToriRobinson.com, link below. Thank you so much for joining us today, Christina. Um, it's brilliant to have you finally, because you've been in demand for so long. Could you please tell us all a bit about you and your work? Thank you so much, Tori, for having me over. It's, it's, a, it's my pleasure to be here. And uh, so my name is Christina Raschke. I'm originally from Brazil. I've chosen to live in Ireland. And I, I usually say that uh, I came to Ireland for work and the weather kept me here. So I'm a lecturer and, uh, in the School of Pharmacy and, and um, Royal College of Surgeons here in Ireland and also funded investigator in Future Neuro Research Centre. And I'm establishing my own lab as principal investigator, the Chronoepilepsy Lab. Tell us about your, your research and what you're going to be focusing on in your lab. I've been working on epilepsy research for a number of years and that's, that's my biggest passion. I'm extremely passionate, mostly focused on therapeutics. And uh, one of the, the, the main uh, parts or main challenges, I believe, in the therapeutic side, especially for discovering uh, new targets, and, and, and we, we really would like to find um, treatments that will modify the disease somehow or move as close as we can towards a cure. That's our, our ultimate goal. Big word. <laughs> big word, big word, but uh, we have a, a lifelong to achieve that. Uh, so, um, it, it, I've always been interested looking at different molecular mechanisms and cellular, kind of zooming in what's happening at cellular level to see how we actually can uh, uh, improve the therapeutic development and develop more precise uh, types of ther therapies. So this is basically the focus on my lab. I've been looking at different aspects of the disease in the past. So I've looked uh, a little bit about inflammation in the brain blood-brain barrier disruption and the past years I've been focusing a lot on microRNAs. We can talk a little bit later about them and, uh, and, and the development of this type of, of therapeutics. And then my lab is focusing mostly on circadian rhythms, uh, the impact of circadian rhythms disruption in the brain and how these rhythms and the disruption of these rhythms actually impact the gene expression. So. In, 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 this, in this way, trying to look in, from different angles of what is happening in the brain uh, during uh, a seizure, but especially what's happening in a, in a brain that becomes uh, 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 with um, hyperexcitability over time. So what is happening there in order to, to, um, to provide better treatments? Is that, is, that, is that epileptogenesis you're referring to, as in like what? makes it start that would be a epileptogenesis yes so 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 that that would be one of the main focus looking at we feel like in a holistic way uh through through epileptogenesis process and trying to understand it uh at, at a cellular specific way what would be all the different processes that could be happening there and in this way hopefully we can either prevent in an ideal world fingers crossed or we can uh, uh, create better tools in order to reverse what what has already been established if you know epilep when the epilepsy is already established i just make things clear for people who are listening and are, you know hoping for the big four lesser word cure um i was talking to somebody else about about the use of this word recently and yes of course that's what we all want but are you referring to 
should we should we achieve the, the four letter word would that be for people who are or babies that are newly diagnosed with who have recently developed the epilepsies or are you talking about somebody who's like in their 40s and has had it forever and already has some you know like you know, the brain damage or sclerosis or something like that um caused by the epilepsy would you be talking about forwarding the that or those people i think like it is a big word and epilepsy, as, as you all know, is extremely complex. So we have a number of different conditions that we are talking about. And we really have to try to desiccate, like, you know, part by part. So uh, I, I, ha I have to say that that's going to be uh, looking individually is like as much as we can look into the individual rather than create one recipe that fits for everyone. I think then we're going to be moving towards, you know, um, a, a progress uh, in, in the field. So as, as, as much as we can individualize the, the, the knowledge that we have. So I, I believe that that's going to be something very important for, for the future. Precision medicine, right? Precision medicine, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, one, one of those terms, I think I've, I've put that into the glossary, the Epilepsy Sparks glossary. I'll, I'll check. Everyone take a look. Um, what got you into the epilepsies? Do tell, because it's a rather specialist field, isn't it? And, you know, we can hear the passion in your voice. What, what brought you to this? It, 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 I've always been passionate, like as an undergrad student, I'm pharmacist as, as background, yeah. and as an undergrad uh, graduate student, I was very passionate about neuroscience. I think the brain is the most fascinating machine that we have in the world, and nothing can actually uh, compare to, 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 to our human brain. And to understand the brain um, in a kind of in a physiological way, you know, the, the processes in the brain and how it works, I think like always fascinated me a lot. So I ended up in epilepsy research, like particularly I ended up by chance because I used to work in, in, a, in a hospital as a clinical pharmacist in the oncology. So I was, I was actually actively searching for a master's training in oncology. And funnily enough, at that time, as it usually happens in science quite often, didn't have any funding available. And then I had a, a, a professor that actually guided me and said, well, but I have funding in an epilepsy project, so would you like to give it a go? <laughs> so it was extremely random, uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I fell in love immediately and that's, that's, that's been more than a decade now. <laughs> Goodness. I've been very lucky that I, I, could, I could keep my studies like from my master's, PhD and postdoctoral training over the years, uh, looking at different aspects of the basic and, and translational research on, on epilepsy. And how does your um, focus of the, on the epilepsy, especially when it comes to research, mix with your lecturing? Um, how do you combine that's the two? A, that's a very good question. I think like I, I really like the idea of, uh, you know, teaching by experience, especially like, you know, not only with the PhD students, master's students, but especially with the undergrads, because um, as an undergrad myself, I remember like always like looking up at professors that would have the practical experience. And I think bringing this environment from the lab, bringing this, the knowledge that we have, our daily lab life, to the classroom, to the undergraduate classroom, is extremely important and really fostered their curiosity and uh, and, and, and and different things. So I I'm very fortunate to, to to teach in the CNS module, in the central nervous system module, in the pharmacy, the lecture in, in epilepsy and and anti seizure medication. So that's how I it blends. But but even though for for other disciplines that I would teach in the pharmaceutics field, it always brings the, the research aspect. And, and I think like it's, it's really important to make these, uh, these analogies and, and, and bring this different world and, and, and show a different reality to the undergrads. So the, these undergrads, they are aiming to become pharmacists, are they? Uh, in yes. theory, yeah? Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, so that, uh, I think that's great, just thinking about things from the patient perspective. Um, I'm lucky I don't generally need to uh, seek advice when it comes to the epilepsies um, or my epilepsy rather from my pharmacist but I know loads of loads of people do and uh, pharmacists can be so like run off their feet right and so if they know from the beginning a bit about the epilepsies and get that extra interest I think from yourself and they'll realize that actually this is something really important and and really necessary for many people who visit their pharmacy I think it's just like lots of uh, I imagine this is actually I'm not basing this on any uh, research, but I get the impression that lots of patients and families don't 
know or, or think that really their pharmacist is necessarily somebody to go to when it comes to advice for their lives with epilepsy? Yeah, I, I think that's a very important point. And I think like also like as a kind of, you know, health professionals, the, the teaching of health professionals, they're exposed to so much over a kind of relatively short amount of time. And they have so many diseases and so, so many conditions to learn about. But at the same time, it's, it's really important to make a very strong point in each one and the relevance of each one of them. And, uh, and, and, and having this contact with, for instance, a person that, 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 that has uh, uh, the condition, that's, that's extremely important. It's, it's, so there, there are experiences that we can actually have them, uh, you know, having, uh, for instance, when you came over to my classroom <laughs> as, as an invited <laughs> speaker, to, to speak to the students, I'm absolutely sure that they won't forget that. And <laughs> I've heard already from them how, how much they enjoy that. Yeah. And I think like this, it, this is the moment that we can make the difference, that we, we can really get them, you know, to have the empathy and to, to really understand the relevance of uh, each individual um, disease, condition, it, you know, to, to, to really kind of, um, to understand their, their um, importance, their role as, as, as pharmacists in the community and how much they can help. That's lovely. Oh, thank you for that feedback. You're so, so lovely of it you. It was absolutely awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, and also, I think, I, well, I hope also hearing from, I'm getting a bit of insight from the patient perspective, also enables them to empathise perhaps a little with the carers too, or the family members, because it like maybe triggers something, gosh, if this person could be going through this, then imagine what it could also be like for the people who love them or care about them. Like, you know, because that's obvious, so many diseases, that is the case, right? It's not solely about the person with the diagnosis. Yes, I, 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 used, I used to tell them, I usually tell them or try to, 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 to give the message that they already are pharmacists. So it's kind of, you know, you are here, you are in your, in your pharmaceutical journey, you already are a pharmacist. And rule number one that I believe that we should be thinking of is uh, be aware and listen. Listen to the person that comes to you. You have to really try to enter in that person's brain and try to understand from their perspective what actually they would like to talk about. So I think like from if, if we would get like people to, to, to be more aware, like self-aware and really um, uh, focused on, 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 on tr uh, and, and be trained to, to, to listen to the others, I think that's that's halfway halfway done for a, for a very good communication and, and to really to understand how can we help. <laughs> totally. And also sometimes just knowing that you're being listened to can be great for a patient. It's like a little bit of yes. a ram and you don't have to hear them, you know, really going for it, but just knowing that there's, you know, some, some person you can, you know, have a natter with for, for a moment saying, oh gosh, this epilepsy is doing my head in or, you know, or, or the depression that I'm experiencing is a bit of a, you know, rude word. And then even things like advice on, possibly exercise or sleep and and you know all those different things because it's not all about drugs is it like, like with the epilepsies directly it's not all about drugs it can be about lifestyle as well and i think the pharmacist can be... exactly exactly that's that's really really important point and we all know um as and that's one of the points actually that i, I got very interested as well in the circadian rhythm uh, research and the impact of the brain because we know we, we know a, a, a lot, but at the same time, it's very little that we know. We know a lot in the clinic, like how sleep um, disruption can impact in, in, the, in epilepsy and seizures occurrence. We know that, that um, the lack of sleep, uh, mm. especially. And, and, and there is this um, chicken and egg relationship that um, uh, stress and, and lack of sleep will trigger seizures. And the other way around, well, you, you, you are going to have this dual relationship. And I really got interested knowing more at a molecular perspective. So we, we know what happens actually, what are the, the, the consequences. We know that seizures actually cluster. We know that they have patterns. We hold, know that some people actually only have nocturnal seizures. Some people are gonna have mixed pattern like during the day, during the night. But it's like, uh, what is actually happening at cellular specific level? What's happening in the molecular, in the expression of the genes? And, uh, and how can we better understand all that regulation and 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 and, and also the, to, to 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 better counsel the patients but at the same time to better develop uh, therapeutics or hopefully di different uh, you know a different approach for diagnostic tools 
So that, that's one of, my, uh, one of my, my interests, like comes from all this, you know, general knowledge that we have that we're still lacking to, to zoom in. <laughs> and I guess, what will you experience? And, and specifically that in um, pharmacy, pharmacy work or career is that, you know, it's not solely about seizures. So what else comes in and plays a part in each person's life that can cause such and such and you know and actually what you were speaking about made me think actually of this morning and i just realized i wake up feeling anxious why is that and i know that's really common in well in many humans but especially us with epilepsies and then what does the anxiety lead to that can lead to well further anxiety which can lead to seizures or you know or it can make it difficult to get sleep and and yeah we don't know chicken and egg what causes what it's so frustrating and i think a lot of people feel that sometimes find it difficult to articulate that that's what they're going through. So it's crucial that we have the research on it like you are doing in your lab, but also that pharmacists know what questions to ask. Absolutely, it's, 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 it's really, I, I, I think that's, that's essential. And, and as more information that we can get there and as, as many more professionals that we can get that are actually um, able to give reliable information and um, in, in, in different aspects, I think that's, that's extremely essential. Yeah, and then we can have all you guys come together, all you experts, and share that information, which I know is what you're doing with ILE Yes as well, isn't it? It is, it is. We, we've, we, we have an amazing group uh, within, within ILE Yes, and uh, we have a great network, uh, networking. It's, it's um, a global initiative, and we really try to work together, like all the regions and uh, across the globe, to, to, to try to, to, to promote um, the, the, the more knowledge about epilepsy, increase awareness, and at the same time uh, to really um, promote and support the career development of young um, scientists and cl clinicians and basic scientists. So, or you know, every, everyone that is in an early stage of the career and that's interested in epilepsy. So that's that's one of our main objectives that that everyone is going to get their voices heard and that we can spread the word and get as as much more reliable information as possible. <laughs> yeah, because let's face it, we know there's a lot of um, unreliable information out there, and so the more you know, well-trained scientists, researchers that we have the better, but we need funding for that. So we need, you know, anybody listening who has any influence on those who provide funding, whether it be, you know, big organizations, I won't name them or whether, I don't know, whoever it is, please get them to realize that the epilepsy is a highly impactful, negatively impactful thing upon societies, not just upon the individuals, but on societies. And if we're to expect improved lives for patients and families in the future, well, that's only going to happen through research, through, you know, credible information, um, which you guys provide. And it's not a quick, it's not a quick job. It takes time and um, it takes money. So exactly. And it's extremely hard. I have to say for me as an early career researcher is like, uh, it's, it's a long path until, especially if you, you know, if, if someone is, is focused on staying in academia in academic position. So it's, it's a long path until you are able to establish yourself as an independent researcher and not only establish yourself, but consolidate a career as well and get the, the, the right support to, to, to keep going in research. I have, I have to say that I've been like extremely fortunate and extremely lucky uh, to, to, to be around uh, amazing people that have been supported my, my career progression uh, a lot. Uh, however, I'm extremely co uh, conscious that uh, th this is something that, uh, you know, we have to have this type of initiatives all over the world and to try to, to support each other and really progress together because there is there is no research with one person. It's, it's really a team effort and not only a team at regional level that it would be something that possibly would be more uh, in, 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 well, a reality in the past, but now we are so globalized, we have access to information in such a fast way and we can connect with people. So I think that's, that's, that's one of the beauties of, of uh, ILES, that we've been creating this networking, that we're not um, only uh, you know, uh, promoting a number of activities, but also we, we have a scientific networking and bridging a lot uh, the clinical side with the basic research. I think this is an extremely important point that uh, basic, basic re in translational research work together with, with, the, clinical, with the clinical side. 
could you um, explain to people, actually, those who aren't familiar, um, I've got a couple of terms, actually. So first of all, translational research, what is that? And just remind people as well, um, what is an ILEES? Because not everybody knows. Translational research, and that would be the main focus of, of my own research, is, is focusing the research already in uh, a, a, applying it, like already thinking of how this is going to be applied in a clinical trial or to benefit uh, people with epilepsy. So my questions come from a problem from, uh, f f from the need from the people with epilepsy. So the questions are kind of driven and then you, you get that question and you work backwards and try to, to, to combine and to bring this, this finding as soon as possible towards translation that we, we talk. So it means from the laboratory, from the basic uh, laboratory in vitro, or even with working with some rodents models already to, from the preclinical side, to hopefully as soon as possible to the clinical side. So it's, it's really important that we need translational research, we need basic research that sometimes would be a research that not, at a glance would not give you that, um, that direct link with the, the, this, these questions that we need to answer. However, they are also very important because we are looking at mechanisms cellular mechanisms, molecular mechanisms or uh, other things in, in, in the brain that we would connect together uh, and would support. As regards the ILE, yes, so is the, the Young Epilepsy Session within the, the International League Against Epilepsy. So we are a, a global group, um, um, a, a big group uh, with a, a number of, of different regions ar um, ar around the globe. And uh, the objective is, is as I, I just mentioned, is to really promote uh, the, the, the growth and the, 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 per, the personal professional growth of early career researchers interested in epilepsy. So they could be from the clinical side, scientists from the basic translational research, nurses, pharmacists, and anyone that would be interested in epilepsy is very welcome to join ES. So we, we work a lot uh, with advocacy, trying to promote um, awareness, trying to, to, to bring more knowledge, but at the same time to really create this network that we can, um, through a number of different task forces, uh, promote education and, and equip the, 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 these professionals to work uh, with, uh, with epilepsy. In a, in a different in, in different ways. ILE yes, is so cool. I can completely back up what Christina's just said, just from my own like, well, my own pathetic perspective. But just like, uh, just sitting back and observing and listening to you guys and watching your activities together and the positivity that you have in well, first of all, you know, wanting to improve the lives of people affected by epilepsies, but also excited about you know what research and the future holds. And, and having that sort of energy together globally, I think is, is amazing. And it's what we really need today because we have, and we were talking about this prior to the call, but we have, you know, people in different, you know, parts of a country in different parts of the world doing different, uh, you know, research. But I think today what you're able to achieve is that you connect and work together globally rather than having like little bits, tiny little labs here, there and everywhere, which enables you to become more productive, which enables you to get answers regarding the epilepsies, you know, more quickly than you might have done otherwise. And also benefits your careers, I think, you know, makes it cooler to actually learn and, and succeed, whatever that might mean, in your sphere. Absolutely, it's a big teamwork and it is extremely important. And also, Tori, it's, it's really important to understand, you know, what we are doing in a similar way, what we're doing differently, you know, what are the needs in different regions and, and, and how is how are how different are the needs in different regions. So like sometimes we talk a lot about, you know, uh, that we, we really do like to, to look for, as, as I just started actually in our chat talking about, you know, neurotherapeutics and we're talking about precision medicine and gene therapy and everything that is coming, what is absolutely amazing with the technology, what we can achieve. However, we have to also think that a number of people in the world actually do not have access to the anti-seizure medications that are already available. And, 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 and this is a, also a major problem. So it's, it's, it's really eye-opening to work together, you know, in, in, from, with different regions to really understand all the differences and, and how can we make the difference together because, you know, nobody's going to make the difference on their own.
And I think a perfect example of that is actually the work that you um, and colleagues have been doing behind the scenes to um, help with the Ukraine crisis. Um, I know that ILAES is very involved in that, as is the ILAE, um, and we were speaking before about the um, episodes I've been doing, some inspiring people from Ukraine, or originally from Ukraine. And, um, and again, that's uh, another benefit of having a global network. And it doesn't really feel global in a way sometimes, does it? Because you could all just like email each other randomly and it takes two seconds for the message to get there. Yes. Yes, no, it's, 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 it's a very, very fair point. And I think this is just one example of, of an initiative and, and the try, like the joint efforts that we, that we can have, that we concentrate in, in, in one action. But there are a number of actions that are happening at the same time as well. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely great to work with, with such a bunch of talented people and, uh, and, and, and collaborate scientifically as well. So I think like this is extremely important that we kind of, we have all, all the levels of, of, of network and, 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 and to know more because, uh, you know, it's, it's um, it, something that I might, may know with, with my background, other person may, may not. And then it's like this exchange that we can have, it's, it's extremely important. And I think like, you know, within uh, ILES, we have the opportunity actually to, 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 to get to know people and to connect in a very easy way. So if anybody's considering a career in um, epileptology or research of any kind, choose the epilepsies because it's so interesting and you will have support. Um, and last question um, of the day today, I think. <laughs> um, I just, oh God, you know, I'm like, I keep asking questions. But um, regarding your lab, um, I just want a quick overview. How many people do you have in your lab? Um, what's your website URL and what does the next five years hold? Yes, my lab is very recently established and uh, thanks so much to, to, to the funding from Cure Epilepsy and the Cameron Voice Foundation. I'm extremely fortunate to, to, to have received funding from them. And um, so I have one PhD student that is, 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 is starting with me, so Tammy Strickland, that, that is doing her project, her four-year project. And so shortly I'm receiving a master's student and one postdoctoral researcher. So it's a very tiny lab, it's been just established and uh, we are looking for to get our first publications out. So it's extremely, it's a very exciting moment for, 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 my, for my research as an independent researcher. So it's a, I would say it's a crucial moment that as I was just mentioning from that moment of establishing and start to consolidate uh, consolidate a career and and keep progressing so I'm, I'm extremely grateful for all the support that I have have been receiving and um, yeah so we, we have a very small group for so far but we are also working a lot um, under the, the Future Neuro Research Center and in the Future Neuro Research Center here in Ireland we have a number of uh, of brilliant people in with with a very very diverse background so we have experts that, that support support me a lot as well on the diagnostics therapeutic side and, and the health so it's it's yeah it's it's extremely it's extremely good to, to be around. I think we featured a couple of them on the podcast already because yeah anybody actually interested in this check out RCSI and, and Future Neuro they're doing such cool stuff actually I really like the Future Neuro website as well um, yes. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, be you know, um, you can tell that the people they're reaching out to, or hope the people that are reading the website, you know, are actually well. They might be clinical academics, but it might just be like your average Joe or Joette, or you know, or in between. It could be could be anybody, and I think that's really good because it encourages interaction with people outside of the sphere of epileptology, neurology and stuff like that. It's really important. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely great to be part of, of, of a research center. And uh, it's, it, it's really nice to get this diversity of the background and work directly in, in a, on a daily basis, you know, the, the, the basic science, the translational research that we we're just talking about with the clinical side. So we have a number of clinicians and uh, that, that work with us. And, and this really brings uh, this close contact and, and I, I, really, I really would encourage, you know, as many people as possible to take this approach in, in, in research. I think that's, that's, that's really important. For me, it was a great learning as an early career uh, investigator. I think that that was one of my biggest, biggest learning 
this 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 exchange well thank you so much for like spending time with us today it's been an absolute joy as always christina um i will provide links to like uh websites and stuff like that featuring your profile down below if anybody is interested in connecting or anything like that thank you so much tori and i really appreciate your support and it's it's been great to chat with you and thank you so much everyone listening